us in and bids us follow in the ways of love and justice. We who are a grand spectrum of God's beloved children, God gathers us in as dancing colors of a rainbow in the sky. We whose very being is the fulfillment of God's promise. Together, let us worship our God, rejoicing in the good news which we celebrate. Come from wandering. Come with your longings. Come with your questions and fears. We come to worship, remembering that God is here. Our opening prayer is number 485, Diverse in Culture, Nation, Race, and can be found in your Jalous Hymnal.
with us online, you'll have the opportunity to voice your joys and concerns from where you are and know that God hears them from wherever we are and connects them one to another. We have in our bulletins here a prayer list as we knew of it at the uh, printing on Friday, have a few updates to that. COVID continues to rear its ugly head in these days with the Omicron variant um, breaking through vaccinations and causing a few uh, discomforts. Some, some are asymptomatic, some are mild uh, symptoms, some a little more than that. And so we have returned to requiring masks in our uh, worship here in response to that so that we are tending to the well-being of everyone. We've had some more cases this week, uh, no one who has been uh, around others uh, within that time period of concern. So we want to be uh, mindful of those who continue to struggle with COVID. Uh, Carolyn Crawford Quinn, uh, his wife of John, uh, fell this week and broke her hip. She's feeling also, many of you already know, with Parkinson's, and so there are a lot of health concerns um, for Carolyn and John providing that care for her. We also um, give thanks for the rain that uh, we have experienced the last few days, what a joy it is to have the rain. Um, even if it interfered with our isotopes game from last <laughs> night, we had a church group that went to the isotopes and had rain delay and rain delay, and we sat in the rain and watched the game, and it was a delight to just have the rain showering on us, for sure. Anne is here today, and we want to be mindful of her um, ankle that is not healing as it needs to be healed, and so she will be facing surgery coming up um, to put a pin in to help that bone to heal. Also, we want to remember that it's Father's Day. Um, we celebrate the fathers and the father figures in our lives who have uh, provided that love and care. But we also were mindful that this day is not a joyful day for many, for a variety of reasons. And so we want to be sure that we are acknowledging that even in our celebrations. It's also Juneteenth Day. Uh, the delayed news that made it to Galveston that the enslaved uh, Africans were free, that they got the news two years after the proclamation. And so we are mindful of all that's packed into that. We celebrate the joys of it being Pride Sunday and this congregation that celebrates all of God's creation that's mindful of those who continue to struggle for equality and inclusion and are even demonized and broken by the church and by society um, simply for living who God created them to be. And we are here as advocates and as support and a community that is safe for all. Wayne is here today. Wilma is recovered from her knee replacement surgery. They both uh, uh, had COVID for a while in all of that and are both recovered from COVID. And Wilma had a rough night and so she's staying at home today. But Wayne, it is a delight to see you here in person after all that you've been through this year. <laughs> Uh, are there others that we want to lift up or updates that you have to anyone on the list? Yes, Steve. My journal kid, but he's still a healthy that fast when he can't do the laundry either. He's doing okay, but he can't go to the bathroom? By himself, he can't go. By himself, okay. Well, we'll continue in prayer for, for John. Thank you for the update, Steve. Sue.
we're navigating the airport yeah. with her plane change. Yeah, absolutely. Sue shares that her friend Kay Sirkleski that we reported last week uh, was in the hospital, is home, and has a long way to go to recovery, is on medication, and improving. Her niece, Christine, is going to D.C. tomorrow, and we'll have to change planes in Dallas, and it's a little uh, anxious producing something she's not uh, used to doing, so we pray for her uh, to be able to uh, maneuver the airport and get to where she needs to go. Yes, Mike. Um, Father Richard Rohr is uh, finally able to meet the Pope this week in uh, Rome. He flew there on Friday, actually flew to New York and then to Rome on uh, Saturday. But uh, he's in declining health. He's uh, going around Rome in a wheelchair. And uh, we just pray that uh, the Lord will strengthen and uh, enrich his time uh, there in, uh, in Vatican City. That's long awaited for him, so yeah, I'm so glad that he's able to be there. Father Richard Rohr um, is in declining health. It has been for a while and continues to decline, but he was able to uh, get this trip put together that he can go to Rome and meet the Pope, which has been a long uh, dream of his. So we're grateful he can do that. John, I'm up to Steve. And he, but he had to walk her, but he, he has a walker, but he can't go by himself in the bathroom. Okay, so he has a walker? Okay. Good. Very good. Those walkers are amazing help. I know many here know that personally. <laughs> so. <laughs> Birthdays, we have to celebrate June Prigmore's birthday is the 21st. Uh, she has flown to Phoenix to be with her son, Alan, who has some health concerns, and she wanted to spend her birthday with him and check on him. And then her son, Joel, in Salt Lake City uh, area, um, also has ongoing health concerns. So she uh, asked that we include them in our prayers as well, June Prigmore's sons, Alan and Joel, as we celebrate her birthday. Michael Cook is on vacation and traveling around and enjoying his birthday will be the 24th. Uh, he'll be back in another week or so. Suzanne Dunnings and Stan Flower Days and uh, Pat White are all on the 24th. So something was going on around that time. <laughs> Different years, of course. <laughs> Jennifer Hills is the 25th and Sonia Kleiss is the, also the 25th. Lots of birthdays in the latter half of June, so we celebrate those birthdays and give thanks to God. Yes, Heidi. I'd like to request an update from Holly on how Leah is in the better Julie. Oh, how who is? Uh, her son, Leah, we found out that they all had COVID last week. Right. Um, well, first, my son Lee had it, and his daughter, who's six, had it. And that's how I got it. Okay, you got it. And, um, and then his wife, Tiffany, got it. And everybody's on the bed now. So they're coming out of it. Yeah. But it's, it's been a inconvenience. It disrupts life in so many ways, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're grateful that you're recovered and back with us. We missed you both last week. I'm glad that Helen is doing well. Yeah, she's, she's safe. She's been safe. Very good. I'd like to mention that today is uh, John and my 46th anniversary. <laughs> 46th anniversary for Molly and John today. which we apparently don't have that in our uh, computers. So that reminds me, if you have a birthday or anniversary and you don't hear it called when that time comes up, that means we don't have it. So please uh, contact the office and let us know so that we can uh, make sure our records are up to date and we can celebrate those days with you. In your bulletin, you will see and on the screen. Everything is on the screen. Also, um, 
our Lord's Prayer, a contemporary Lord's Prayer that we uh, say together each week, and we uh, will close with that. We will have our pastoral prayer, a moment of, of silence for those online to be able to voice theirs, and then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, settle our minds, calm our anxieties, speak to our fears, make your presence known. We worship you this day with much on our minds, much that distracts us from what you have called us to be and to do. The world ravages on with war as Russia continues to invade Ukraine and bring such devastation to that country. As pride events continue around the country, there are still hate groups that want to bring carnage and destruction to those simply celebrating who they are. Gun violence continues to be the way of our culture with mass shootings daily taking lives. Threatening safety and security. Juneteenth is the reminder this day of the history of brokenness in this country that still has much to reckon with. Father's Day, O oh God, is such a joy for so many and a day of painful reminder of broken relationships, of grief and death, of abuse and abandonment. We celebrate the fathers and the relationships that are healthy and nourishing as you intend them to be. And we pray wisdom and courage to step into the brokenness, to come alongside those who need to know that their grief and their concerns matter. We give thanks, O oh God, for the rain that has nourished this parched land, washed anew the plants and trees and all that it has been covered in dust, just like your spirit washes over us, cleanses us of the dust and cobwebs and all that holds us back. Renew us this day, O oh God. We celebrate the healings and hope that come with uh, news of treatments completed, of recovery from COVID, from opportunities to be able to travel once again for the gift of Richard Gore and his long work for justice and for hope for your church. We give thanks for this opportunity to meet the Pope. Protect him and strengthen him on his journey. We give thanks for the birthdays and the anniversaries that remind us that you are still in relationship with this world, creating new life in the many ways that we experience it. Help us to see the joy and the grace and the hope that comes from you. We know that many are worshiping with us online with joys and concerns of their own, and we offer this moment 
knowing that you hear them as they speak them aloud from where they worship. Fill us with your spirit, O oh God, as we continue with the prayer as Jesus taught us, saying, Blessed one, our Father and our Mother, holy is your name. May your love be embodied in the world. May your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Protect us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For all that we do in your love, and all that your love brings to birth, and the fullness of love that will be, are yours now and forever. Amen. And now Michael and Reverend Meredith have our children's moment. So come on down, children, young and old, big and small. And everything in between. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, goodness. <laughs> when you get this old, I just hope I can get back up. <laughs> if you will look, look at these children. These are the young disciples in your church. They are our future. And we are thankful that you are here. Now, I want to tell you a story today, and I'm going to let you look at that. See that picture? Okay. We just sang a song that said, Laughter is healing art. Well, once upon a time, there was a unique and wonderful little hippopotamus named Henry. Henry was very different because he was green. His parents and family loved him dearly, and there was something about Henry. He could laugh. Do you laugh? Do you laugh? Do you get to laugh? Okay, we're good. We're good. His laugh was so good that when he laughed, everyone laughed with him. It did not matter where he went or what he did. Everyone laughed. When Henry first started school, the other little hippos would tease him because he was different. At first, Henry was very upset and would come home and tell his parents that he did not want to go back to school. But the wise parent encouraged Henry to ignore the teasing and just laugh. When he returned to the school the next day, he made a promise to himself that if he was teased, he would laugh. Do you like to laugh? I do. Do you see Henry and his friends? Oh. See Henry and his friends? Okay. Now, let's go on. It says, and that he did. He just laughed and laughed, and soon all the other little hippos began to laugh also. Even the teachers would laugh. So when it came to bullying, they all said in different languages, no way, yet, nine, not out. No more teasing. Okay? Now let's cut the end of the story. Because of his willingness, thank you, to face the bullies, he became a friend to everyone. And as he grew, his laugh drew people to him, and he became a wonderful leader who helped others face the bullies in their lives. He taught people to believe in themselves and their laughter. May you teach us how to laugh again. Can you do that? Okay, will you pray with me? Can you pray with me? Can we stand and pray? Okay, let's stand, and we'll take hands. And you can pray with us too. Okay. Okay. Dear God, dear God, thank you for the gift of laughter. Thank you for the gift of laughter. And may it heal our lives. And may it heal our lives. And remember that all of us, 
remember Jehovah's be to find the joy to find the joy in listening to children and their laughter Amen
facing the Goliath in your life. The Goliath of David's time stated the conditions of the battle. If he won, the Israelites would become slaves to the Philistines. And if the Israelite challenger won, the Philistines would be slaves to the Israelites. Modern day Goliaths issued the same conditions with their challenge. If they win, we will be slaves to a behavior that will not allow us to return to our community. It appeared there were no other alternatives. The Israelites were faced with one of the most fierce and demanding, demanding enemy there was. And then a young shepherd boy stepped forward without heavy armor to face the dreaded enemy with just five smooth stones. And the laughter arose when he stepped forward. And you know the rest of the story. What I would like to suggest is that you look for the five smooth stones in your life to take down your Goliath. Now, why did he choose five smooth stones? Well, maybe it was backup. He brought five. Maybe out of experience with his sheep and their protection, or just to know that if he had to, he had them and there was enough to continue his own attack. Amazingly, it took only one. Are we the backup for someone who is defending us? Or do we just stand back and look? Now let's talk about the stones. Have you ever skipped rocks in a lake to see how many times it would skip in the water? Ever tried it with a stone that was not smooth? The rough rock simply sinks upon entering the water. So now the question is, how does a stone become smooth? Well, it's called abrasion. Rocks collide, causing the rocks to chip and become smooth because sand creates resistance and acts like sandpaper to smooth the rocks. And the motion of water pushes the rocks and causes the rocks to collide with other rocks in their stream things. Now, there were many in our history who created the smooth stones for us, for us to use, and they took the abusion. They took the abrasion. They were rocks to colliding. Just to mention a few. The Stonewall Inn, site of the June 1969 Stonewall riots, is the cradle of the modern LBGTQ rights movement. The term gay pride was crafted by Tom Higgins, a gay rights activist in Minnesota in 1969. Brenda Howard, a bisexual activist, is known as the mother of pride for her work in coordinating the very first pride march in New York City. Gilbert Baker, the designer of the rainbow flag. Vic Pasilla, the first director of Human Rights Campaign. And lest we forget, Harvey Milk, Paul Broussard, Ryan White, Matthew Shepard, the Pulse Nightclub, and all those that lost their lives for who they were. I am sure you can name people who have had an influence in your life that makes you want to stand up and say, I stand with them. And they slay their Goliaths in their death, just as David slew Goliath. And all those who have died sharing their faith, numerous missionaries and others who in their faith and their belief have died, lest we forget. But let's look at some stones, stones that will help us face our life. Number one, learn. Education is the building block that will free you to become the person you want to be. Become knowledgeable about any situation you might find yourself. Your knowledge in your field of work allows for creativity and promotions. And in your faith, knowing about yourself 
will allow you to face uncertainties with courage and tenacity. Your life experiences have shaped you also. Remember, remember David and his experience protecting the flock. Lions, bears, wolves, anything that would hurt them. Number two, empower. Knowledge and experience will empower you to speak up without fear and anxiety. It will also allow you to move forward in seeking your goals. You are never too old to learn. Zig Ziglar has said, repetition is the mother of learning and the father of action, which makes it the architect of accomplishment. The more we repeat our faith, the stronger we become, and the stronger the church becomes. Three, be an advocate. Loaded with knowledge and life experiences, we can now advocate for others. David was doing that for his people. He was not selfish and trying to stand out. David just wanted to represent what he believed. And he could not see his people becoming slaves to this fear. Who will you represent? Will you be there to stand up for those who are more fragile than you? Can you speak up for others? Can you make a stand? Number four, participate. Get involved. Don't lose your momentum. Seek out others like those that are around you to walk with you. David did not stop with one success. Tell your story. You are a vital link to this community and to Albuquerque and all of New Mexico and the world. Never miss a chance to share who you are and what you have become. This church is a perfect example of creating a safe zone for anyone who has faced discrimination or bullying. Being inclusive was what Jesus was all about, and his encounters proved it. Think about the Samaritan woman at the well. Why are you speaking to a Samaritan? Think about the good Samaritan and who took care of him when he fell at the road. You've got all of these wonderful examples that just permeate our soul to remind us we're not alone. And just to remind you, in the past, the gay bars were a safe haven a place of acceptance for who you are and could be. And there you met others just like yourself, struggling with their own Goliaths, and you could relate. What a shame the church could not have been that safe zone. But guess what? This is true with other groups who are struggling with their Goliath. Groups like Al-Anon, AA, and addiction groups, any addiction group, is there a place here for them to learn and be accepted? Anyone, anyone who is struggling should find this a haven of love. And then the last five, love you. A great philosopher once said, know thyself. Normally, everybody stops there, and there's no more, and you miss the best part. <laughs> know thyself. The unexamined life is not worth living. Anyone know the name of the philosopher? He came a long time before Jesus. There is a song that speaks volumes about any person who is facing discrimination. But it has become somewhat of a song that speaks to the LBGTQ community. I am what I am. I don't want praise. I don't want pity. I bang my own drum. Some think it's noise. I think it's pretty. And so what if I love each sparkle and each maple? Why not try and see things from a different angle? You're Life is a sham if you can shout out, I am what I am. I am. And no matter whether you're gay, straight, indifferent, your life counts and has meaning. 
Jesus introduced the greatest commandment. You've heard it earlier, but I want to emphasize it again. May it become your mantra. And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Learn to love yourself so that you can love others. RuPaul gives the same message at the end of every one of his shows. If you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love someone else? Can I get an amen? Amen. That's RuPaul. <laughs> we have faced a lot in our life. It may be when we first became honest with ourselves about who we are. It may be when you announced to your friends that you were LBGTQ. Maybe it was when you stopped a bully. Or you first stood up and said, I don't appreciate your cruel jokes. This is just unacceptable behavior. I know it's hard to stand up to bullies. But we can do it. We have not. And we have a community of faith to support us. That's inclusion. But I want to leave you with some thoughts. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Love them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest, people may cheat you. Be honest anyway. What you spend years building, someone may try to destroy overnight. Build anyway. People favor underdogs, but only follow top dogs. Fight for some underdogs, anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy, anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good, anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give the world the best you've got. Anyway. And just think. With five stones, any Goliath can be challenged and taken out. Thanks be to God for loving us right where we are and for who we are. When you leave today, there are a basket of stones back there in the fellowship area, take one and put it in your pocket and remember you have a smooth stone to challenge the fear and anxiety. Some may be rough, you may not be there smooth again. Choose what you will, but take it with you so it reminds you that you can face your Goliath along with this community. In the name of the one who loves you, right where you are. Amen. Amen.
the reminder, as each has received a gift, thank you, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Your tithes, gifts, and offerings can be given via online donations on our website on the Givelify app or by mailing your check to the church office. If you are here in person, your offerings can be placed in the collection plates in the back on either side of the center door. With our strengths, let us take the leap Learn, empower, advocate, and participate, and love yourselves. We are diverse in culture, nation, race, and color, even if you're green and laughing. <laughs> we all come together here by your grace. Lord, our Father, as we strive to love our neighbors as ourselves, we know in our hearts you love us all, and in full awareness of your love, and with enduring courage and pride, let us come to this table, spread with gifts of love and broken bread, where all are welcome, and all may become and arise as friends. Our communion hymn is Eat This Bread, number 414, and we will sing it twice.
As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And what an honor it is to share this meal every time we gather, knowing that we are connected with all people as we are all made. Will you join me in prayer?
join us now as we take this bread of life, this cup of salvation, knowing that no one was turned away and neither are you. Join me in a prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious God, we thank you so much for setting a table where no one was denied, knowing that those who would betray and those who would deny Jesus were still served by the same hands that would later be pierced. Thank you so much for providing us with the deep, fulfilling love and meal that can never be taken away from us, no matter how hard some try. Amen. Amen. We have gathered to worship our God together in all our diversity. We have prayed, we have sung, we have heard a word of hope, God's inclusive love, God's presence in this world with us. If you are worshiping with us online and you believe that God is uh, moving you to reach out to us and find safety, sanctuary, a place where you can serve and be authentically who God created you to be, I invite you to reach out to me following the service. You can find the phone number and email address on our website, monavista.org. If you are visiting with us here in person and you feel that God is moving you to join in fellowship and ministry and service here with us at Monavista, I invite you to either reach out to me after the service or come forward as we sing our closing hymn. Let us stand and sing together. Chem number 494, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Verses 1, 2, and 3. The words are also on the screen. Let us sing together as the body of Christ.
First, Meredith will be on vacation for the next couple of weeks, so we pray for her, and her mother will be coming in, and they will have some uh, treasure time together. So we uh, send her off on vacation with our blessing and our prayers and our gratitude for the ministry that she shares with us here. I also want to uh, let you know there's a reception following this service in the fellowship hall. Uh, cake and refreshments and a reminder of the community that we are called to be. And lastly, Helen LeCate, 96 years old, chaired the committee that took this congregation through the open and affirming process back in 2011. Thank you. of God's love for all. Today, we remember the struggle that beckons us to proclaim God's love and justice. May our love extend like God's love, well beyond our own created borders. As we depart from our collective worship, may we find the abundance of God's grace and our learning from each other. May we find the grace to make mistakes, to continue learning, and never give up. May we find the grace to radically expand our welcomes as an expression of the hospitality of Christ. May we find grace to breathe in slowly God's Spirit to fill us with the knowledge that we are filled with enough. Even as we celebrate today, let us remember that tomorrow there is still much work to be done. Let us go from here to share the good news of God's love for all. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. Amen. I will invite Michael to come to the back with me so that you can extend your welcome and your gratitude to him for the message for today. And so now we hear our folks' lead. Mm -hmm. 